Welcome to another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias, Almost Live. This episode was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Well, it was recorded in front of a live cat. Any case, hope you enjoy the show. Before you is a bait knife. Underneath the bait knife is a box of junk knives. And on top of that is this little coffin shaped can that says Mustang USA that uh, had a knife in it that was definitely not made in the United States. What do all these have in common? Well, they're all going to be featured in Knife Chats with Tobias Almost Live. And so we'll start with the Mustang USA can. And if you notice, I've only got six P38s left. Um, I bought a bunch of them at the beginning of 2020, and that's what's left. And that is not going to be enough to make it through 2021, because just about every correspondence that I send out ends up with a P38 in there. So I need to uh, restock my P38s, and I'm going to use this knife to do that. This is uh, my Evolution bait knife in a zombie green with fish skeletons. And tell me, that is not kind of a cool looking knife. And I keep thinking, one of these days I need to do a video on bait knives because um, they are kind of interesting. And it's uh, one of those knives that are really inexpensive. And if it's something that a person, especially a young person just starting off uh, wanting to collect uh, fixed blades, nothing wrong with uh, starting off with bait knives because they are some of the least expensive knives you're going to find and they have an interesting history behind them and maybe one of these days I'll get around to doing that history of bait knives. In any case, let me pop this open. If you notice, you got this little clip here because it's not a real, um, real uh, sheath or anything. You're not gonna hang this off of your belt. It just gets thrown in your tackle box. And you got this little cutout here for it, and that's so you've got this little cutting ledge there or cutting edge right there that you can use for cutting fishing line and stuff. But you gotta pry this up and pull it off, or you can just give it a good yank and it'll come off. But I'm gonna do that off camera so I don't end up cutting myself. And so there you have it my bait knife by Evolution. Notice you've got the cutting edge up here. That is for cutting through uh, fish bone and stuff. And uh, well, the pattern is followed over onto the uh, knife blade. You see evolution right there. And then uh, you notice all sorts of slots in the blade or in the little scabbard there. And that is so this will drain from water. And these are always really easily, um, dirt cheap knives. They have a tang that goes in about that far uh, because all you're really using it for is cutting bait and stuff and the uh, cutting edge up here is really for cutting through fish bone and stuff like that in any case why did I need that well I got to open up this packet so I can restock my p38s and there we go well, let's get the can filled up. So, another 50 P38s for the year. Let's see how that goes. And now on to the box of junk knives. Dun, 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 or something like that. Seems like this should start off with a theme from 2001 A Space Odyssey as we slowly open the lid and reveal what's inside. In any case, up on top, a Chipway Cutlery uh, Upswept Skinner. Uh, and right away, you see right there, you got the goop showing up because this thing like so many other knives in Pakistan, made in Pakistan, 
have some kind of disgusting glue in the sheath. So I really need to take this out of the box and leave the sheath separate from the knife or it will ruin it. Looky there, it's already got the green stuff showing up on it. Try and get some of that off. Sheath is coming out of the box. It will be stored separately. But why is this knife in there besides the crappy sheath? Because that could be replaced. Well, it's a knife I have no use for. See what happens? Really sad that they put out a sheath like that and all that stuff just drips out of it. So that is one of the major issues I have with knives coming out of Pakistan with the top grade quality leather sheath because uh, the sheaths really suck no matter how good the quality might appear at first glance. Um, so just something to be aware of. In any case, uh, what I don't like about the knife otherwise is, well, notice how well that is lined up. Not lined up very well at all. Plus, it wasn't a knife that I had ordered. It's just a knife that I received from uh, Frost Cutlery a long time ago. And as it was something that I never wanted to begin with, why do I want to keep it? So that's why it went into the box of junk knives. I'm going to have to store it separately now, though, because when I do want to give it away, I don't want to give away a knife that is even more damaged uh, than it already is. Well, as long as I'm pulling out uh, Pakistani crap knives, I, we got one here too. Uh, this one, the sheath, doesn't seem to have all that disgusting glue seeping all over the place. This is one of those uh, top quality Pakistani knives. Um, two things went wrong with this one. Uh, I really should have looked at the uh, uh, description better on eBay when I was late at night buying it because it's way smaller than I thought it was ever going to be. Um, and it just is not a good comfortable way to hold it. But you do have the genuine stag handle and genuine Damascus steel blade. Uh, probably need to oil it. Or scrape off whatever's there so maybe there is something in that sheet that is dripping out underneath the uh, snap there who knows yep something it's like the oil or something I don't know so another knife that needs to be stored separately and it probably will but there you go uh, and it's just um man look at it uh, got marks there this used to have a tank coming upwards too I thought well maybe if I grind that down at least I'll feel better because I can get my finger up on top there and do something with it but at the end of the day it's like no I don't really care for this knife at all and um, it's like when am I ever gonna learn my lesson and stop buying uh, crappy Damascus out of Pakistan and hopefully with that knife, I learned that lesson. Ooh, here's a good one. Look at that. It's a Colonial Executive. And uh, why would I throw a Colonial Executive in there considering I collect these knives, the, uh, the Swiss Master Series knives by Colonial? Well, the reason I'm throwing that one in here is because uh, it's not in the, the best of shape. Um, it's definitely been... Uh, used and abused a little bit and I bought this one a long time ago as a placeholder until I could get something better and since then I've got two of them that are much that are in much better condition than this one so why not spread the wealth and throw it in my box of uh, basically my giveaway knives in the event that somebody else could use in a, a uh, colonial Swiss master executive so that's why that one's in there and that's why a lot of these knives end, end up in here is because uh, um, I have duplicates of it. And I figure why not uh, give this one to somebody else. Oh, here's a kind of a cool one. I've had this one for a while. I knocked out the, uh, the thumb uh, screw here because, uh, well, I didn't need it. You can open it without it. But what you can see here is this is basically... 
a clone of the Kershaw Shuffle, except it's got a wooden handle. It says there, X44. And it used to actually say uh, Buck USA on the blade, but I sanded that down and off because this is not a knife by Buck. But you can see here in it, it also says uh, Buck Jobs Cutlery or something like that on there. Um, and it's got a buck on there. So I guess they were trying to capitalize off of both Kershaw and Buck when they made this knife. Um, and it's not a bad knife. I, I use it for a while. And, uh, you know, if you like a Kershaw shuffle and you want it one with wood handles, well, there you go. Uh, but it's also a knife that, uh, I don't know. I never use it, have no use for it, and the fact that it is a clone of a Kershaw Shuffle, uh, I would rather have a real Kershaw Shuffle than the clone, so that's why that one's in here. Uh, now here's one that was a serious, serious uh, disappointment um, by, what is it, Cuda? It's a Marlin Spike knife, titanium bonded, you got the... Uh, You've got the serrated edge going on there, and it's got a nice comfy blue handle on it, and you got the, a decent enough marlin spike on the back, which locks up pretty well on everything, and it has the normal release. So why wouldn't I want this knife? You notice also, you can adjust it with a, a torque wrench. It's held together by torque wrench, so. But the thing that bothered me about it is they go through all that hassle of doing all that and then they make this solid. Uh, there's no um, lanyard hole in this. I've thought about drilling a lanyard hole through it. Maybe I'll do that someday. And if I do that, maybe it'll come out of the box. But as it is right now, I, every time I look at it, it's like a uh, major disappointment simply because uh, I can't hook a lanyard to it. It's like. Why don't you go through all that hassle of doing that? Because uh, if you notice here, locking blade, you got a liner lock on the blade. But um, just, uh, I was just disappointed in the knife. Nothing wrong with it at all. Totally functional. Got interesting uh, soft grip scales with like fishing, uh, well, soft grip handles, but it's cut in there like fishing scales. So it's pretty cool. And I think uh, CUDA was, uh, it was or is owned by uh, uh, Camillus Un uh, through United Cutlery. I don't know for sure, but anyway, um, there's one, another, another one that's pretty cool, but just not, uh, it just misses the marks for me, so I, it, it, I don't want it. And then we got this one back here. It's uh, a flippy type of, uh, there it is, a flippy type of stiletto, gold tone, Milano. Uh, don't even know why I ended up getting this or how I ended up getting it. Got the uh, liner release over there for it, I believe. Yeah, that's the liner, so you can pull it over and close it. Um, suppose that might be reversible, a reversible clip. I don't know for certain. Probably could reverse the clip, but... Um, yeah, just not something I'm interested in. So um, another one that's just in the box, waiting to go somewhere else. And this one back here, this, well, it's not, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this one. I actually carried it for a while. It's just a little Winchester uh, Stockman. Um, and it is sharp. Used it a little bit, carried it for a while got a good snap to it and everything made in China um, really nice wood scales this you know if you like those slimline uh, stockmans this is really a, a beauty knife uh, nice and smooth and everything else stainless steel throughout in the back back here um, and made with genuine surgical stainless steel so you can kind of guess what the blades are but they're sharp and uh, it works pretty well for an EDC so Nothing wrong with that one. And then we got this little doohickey here. This is uh, out of Mam, Portugal, uh, and uh, I kind of like this. It's all—it's definitely a friction folder. You can 
open the blade up. It doesn't lock or anything. Um, nice little size for your hand and everything. Um, these things are not expensive at all. And on the opposite side, you got a little fork over here. Um, the main reason I'm not interested in this knife is mainly because I was expecting something a little bit bigger. This thing is only about, uh, what? Yeah, three inches or 76 millimeters long. If this thing were four inches or 100 millimeters long, I would probably be keeping it. But uh, because of its size, I, I just... Uh, I, I threw it in the uh, the giveaway box or my box of junk knives. Oh, and here we have a Steel Warrior Scout knife. Red and blue. Why would I be throwing a perfectly good Steel Warrior Scout knife in the box of junk knives? And everything pretty much opens and closes okay. Got a little wobble there. And I think he even got a little wobble over here. No, that's pretty tight. But the reason I'm getting rid of it is right there, this blade here. I don't like it when my uh, when my uh, punch blades have that much of a uh, of a flex in them. You know, if this were any longer, it would have the. It'd be almost like a. Uh, a fillet blade so that's uh, the main reason it's just got too thin of a, a punch on there as for my likings but otherwise it's not a bad knife at all uh, but I know I'm never going to do anything with it or use it and uh, despite it being a scout knife it's one of those knives that I just want to get rid of and here's another one this is a camp king that uh, I've got in the box and getting rid of it because it's missing a bail. Uh, I like uh, the knife to be complete. And also, uh, everything on it is pretty loose. So definitely things, you know, the shell handles are loose and everything else. So I have no real use for it. And let's see. Oh, down here. Got this, uh, another Stockman, a Steel Warrior Stockman. And... It's in the box because it's missing its shield. I have so many of these that are missing a shield. Uh, I know someone was looking for one of these, a, a, a Caribbean Blue Steel Warrior Stockman. If you're out there, um, send me an email. And uh, if you're still interested in it, let me know. But be forewarned, it's missing the shield. Uh, and, uh, well, it definitely needs some polishing. Uh, if you're interested in it, let me know and I'll try and get it out to you. Oh, yeah. I think I talked about this before. This is the Bill Dance uh, Filet Knife. Is it Bill Dance? Yeah, Bill Dance Outdoor. And why do I want to get rid of a Bill Dance Filet Knife on my Frost Cutlery? Uh, I mean... Nice flexible blade, and it probably works pretty well. Uh, but what's the problem with it? Watch that hole right there as I push down the lock back on it. Watch. Not a very good lanyard hole, don't you think? That's kind of an issue. And it does kind of catch when you're closing it, but it is eventually going to work into your lanyard, and if you got a actually like a metal thing going through there, you're going to chip the tip of your fillet blade. So that's uh, the problem with the uh, Bill Dance fillet knife. Oh, right up front here, yeah. Stainless China Swiss Army knife knockoff. Uh, I'm still on the fence on this one in the junk box. I know it will eventually be gone, but first I gotta find out uh, when this uh, symbol was first used on a uh, on these uh, knives because I want to find out where it originated and uh, and all that stuff like that. But I also hang on to this knife uh, to remind people that if you see this little hump in the middle of these knives, it means it's a junk knife, and you really, really, really should give. Uh, serious thought of never 
ever picking up one of these because they are just really crap. Um, and you'll see the scissors like this. And for the most part, especially if they're new, if they're newly being made, they're, they're pretty much crap. Now I do have quite a few of these with the wood handles that are uh, like souvenir knives, like a, a souvenir knife of, Smoky, uh, of the Smoky Mountains and stuff like that. But um, let's face it, they're, they're really crap knives. Uh, and that's why it's in the box. And uh, yeah, this is one of the older ones, but it's still just a really a piece of junk knife. So it's in the box, but it's also one of those knives that I'm not real keen uh, to send out to somebody because uh, you know what? I have my, uh, my reputation that I have to uh, maintain as well. And this knife is truly junk. So I hang on to it as a reminder to other people that these are really junk knives. Don't buy one. And we have the 100 knives for $100. Your Frost, uh, I think, I can't remember what this one was called. I've, I've actually featured this uh, knife in a couple videos. Um, yeah, it's still holding up pretty well. It's got the same model that I had originally. I've actually done batoning with this knife and uh, and it held up pretty well. Got that nice finger choil up front. Feels good in the hands. And you know, for just a beater knife to have on your workbench to, to sacrifice in the uh, in, instead of screwing up a really good knife, these things aren't really that bad. You're talking about uh, what 420 J2 tool steel or something like that, but what do they call it? Surgical steel. You could do surgery with these things. Who wouldn't want one of these knives? I mean, you can only buy a hundred of them for a hundred dollars. What's this one back here? Ah, this is a Colt Marlin Spike. I have two of these. Uh, but if you notice, this one has some damage done to the uh, the G10 handle, and that's because I was trying to get the G10 handle off. And uh, after about a half an hour or so of working at trying to get that handle off, that's the best I could do is get a couple lines cut through there. Um, and what I was thinking is, well, if nothing else, if I can cut through there, Maybe I could at least uh, replace it with a little bone accent or something like that to improve uh, how much I screwed it up. But um, in the end, uh, at the end of the day, it's like, uh, you know what, screw it. I'm tired of this. Uh, it was a project that wasn't going anywhere anyway, so it ended up in the junk box. And we have this one here. Uh, this one goes in and out of the junk box. This is an old colonial fishtail. I've got another one that's in, in good shape with the handle still attached. This actually had shell handles on it. And what I've always wanted to do is uh, cut a handle to fit it and, and just uh, reattach a handle to it. But I just got tired and said, you know what, the blade's all worn out anyway. Uh, let somebody else play with it. So it went into the junk box. And, uh, well, let's pull these two out at the same time. Um, Girl Scout knife and a Ulster Boy Scout knife. Uh, why are these in the uh, junk box? Well, this one is missing the bail. And that's something that you see common with a lot of the old Boy Scout knives because a lot of people just popped them off and removed them. And uh, because I've got so many other Ulster Boy Scout knives that are in better shape, um, this one went into the, uh, the box. Um, definitely need some cleaning and stuff but all the blades open and close pretty much definitely needs cleaning and oiling but I don't feel like doing it because uh, I'm not gonna keep the knife anyway that's going to go out as for this one well you can probably see right there it is missing a blade it's got the can opener but it is missing the cap lifter and if you notice that can opener is very lazy and once again, I've got better uh, Girl Scout knives than this one. The tip of the uh, of the uh, uh, punch is also screwed up, 
and the main blade is uh, sitting proud. So there are numerous issues with this knife. So that is why it is in the uh, junk box. Here's an old Camilla's fish knife. It went into the junk box because uh, after uh, getting the handle off, which was all messed up anyway, I mean the handle was not complete anyway, uh, I started trying to clean it and everything, but uh, really, despite being um, able to get a very good edge on it and everything, um, you can see just how pitted the blade is. And I guess some people would look at that and go, man, that's kind of cool looking. And uh, and sometimes I look at it and go, man, that's kind of cool looking. Um, I just don't know if I'm ever going to bother to uh, finish working it out. Blade lockup is not too bad. You got the brass uh, uh, liner going across to lock it up and it works still quite well. And uh, the bolsters uh, are not nearly as pitted as the blade are or blade is but they are somewhat pitted and you can look at that back spring I mean uh, look at all the corrosion that was in there um, you got the brass liners I clean them up pretty well uh, but it really needs to be uh, rehandled and repinned and uh, I just don't know if I've got time to do it or and I thought well this might be a nice project for somebody else so that's why it went into the junk box and this one here, this was one of my attempts with, uh, uh, I think this was, um, was this Rit Dye or was this Kool-Aid or I don't know. It, this started off as White Smooth Bone. I think it's uh, Rit Dye. I think I tried dyeing this with, uh, with Rit Dye as well. And um, looks pretty good, but... Uh, I really don't have a use for it so that's why it's in the box and uh that's one of those that uh i think somebody would be pretty happy to have i think uh well the uh the die on there looks as good as anything you're going to get out of a uh steel warrior anyway so yeah not bad at all but um yeah went into the box because i thought somebody else would enjoy it more than me what would it, oh wow uh, why did this one make it? Ah, there you go. The Problem Solvers. This was a uh, Victorinox uh, advertisement knife I picked up. And uh, is it? Yeah, it's a uh, 91 millimeter knife. So it's like, it's basically a Spartan, but it's uh, missing the uh, key ring. So it is really a standard. And. Uh, Blades work uh, okay, I think. Yeah, it's not that old because it's got the 90 degree. Ah, there's one of the issues. The uh, the cap lifter hits the uh, hits the can opener when opening and closing, so that's an issue. Otherwise, uh, not really that bad. You can see the handle is also cracked there and pit it but the handles could easily be swapped out so it's just one of those knives that uh i got so many other swiss army knives that are in much better shape why not give this one to somebody else oh and here's a, a cute one down here this is kind of interesting it is a um it's kind of like a canoe uh, but it's got um two clip blades on it and it's a white smooth bone uh, blades are definitely uh, uh, stiff. The pivots are not very good. Genuine stainless steel. Uh, probably made in Pakistan. Yep, there we go. Pakistan. Um, white smooth bone. Uh, I think I picked this up and it was, uh, I picked up another knife and this knife was thrown in as a second knife in the group. And so I really had no use for it, and that's why it ended up in the box. Um, what's this one down here? Ah, this is a a Winchester little uh, three-inch lockback by Winchester. I actually carried this one for a while too. Got a nice uh, bass on there, and you see Winchester there, limited edition. Ooh, from 2006. This is one of those knives that uh. 
I think this one goes in and out of the box. Uh, so it's going to be uh, one of these days I'm going to go ahead and just grab it and say, you know what, get rid of it. Give it to somebody who really is going to use it and want it. Just because it's a limited edition from 2006 doesn't really mean anything. I don't know if this knife is uh, made in USA or made in China. If it's made in USA, I'll pull it out. But I don't see anything saying that it's made in USA. So I'm assuming it's probably made in China. Um, and it's like a, an inserted uh, celluloid handle. Uh, kind of a cool little knife. That might be one of those knives that comes out of the junk box, but for the moment it's in there. But like I said, some of these come in and out of the box. Um, this one here, the Sky Titan, it's uh, by Rough Rider. And I, I like this knife and I don't like this knife. Um, the real problem I have with it is that it's a frame lock. If I would have known it was a frame lock to begin with, I probably would not have picked it up because I have a, I'm left-handed and I have a hard time working frame locks. They're much harder to push over than a typical liner lock with my, um, with my left hand. And that's why um, it's in the box. Seems much difficult. Uh, this is not assisted opening. It is just on a, what a ceramic ball bearing or whatever. Uh, also, I cannot really flick it open with the thumb studs. So that was another problem with it. I can flip it okay with the uh, the flipper tab as long as my hand is not on the uh, on the the clip here because the clip presses against the uh, the frame lock and then it just makes it very hard to open it up. So it's one of those knives that I have to think about to open and I don't like to think. And there you go. You know, if, if I got to think to open it, I don't want to have to hang on to the knife. Otherwise, it's a perfectly good knife, and it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, the, the blade is kind of funky, but it's also pretty sharp. So, in any case, that's why it's in there. Nothing at all wrong with the knife. Uh, it's just a knife that doesn't work well for me. Oh, this is a little Walmart special. Another little lockback. And why is it in there? Uh, because, well, it's a little Walmart special. And I actually bought the knife for the wooden box that it came with. So that's why that's in there. Here's a uh, little Marlin Spike by Davis. And the reason it's in there is, uh, once again, nothing wrong with the knife at all. Um, main reason it's in there is because I've got multiples of this knife. So I don't need this one. Um, yeah, the, uh, oh, that is one thing that does annoy me. Uh, see where the, uh, the latch has to be for this to lock? You have to press down on that to keep that locked because otherwise, you know, that's not a locking Marlin spike if all you have to do is get some pressure on there when you're not holding that. So that's, uh the reason this one ended up in the box and I'm putting it back in because I'm running out of room outside the box and what's this down here ah another steel warrior and that's why that's in the box a uh, piece of the bone fell away uh, I keep looking for the bone it's probably in one of the drawers uh, where the knives were stored at one time or another and if I can ever find the bone I will probably glue it back on there and return the knife to the box. Um, Rough Riders uh, Armor Hide Series uh, toothpick, little toothpick. And this is one of those knives that uh, I really don't know why, but it keeps ending up back in the box. It is the only Armor Hide knife I have from Rough Rider that I can think of. No, I also have a, uh, a Hawkbill which uh, I think I have the hot bill. I might have given the hot bill away already. In any case, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I love the bone handles on here, but uh, I don't know. It always ends up back in this box for one reason or another. Anything else in here? Oh, a, uh, this is a um, frost 
it was a Steel Warrior um, Copperhead. Is it the? It's not one of the secretive ones that you, you use the secondary blade to lock the uh, the main blade. It's just your typical Steel Warrior. No, it is a Steel Warrior. Uh, it's got the little the white tail. Might be. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, white tail. I guess frost white tail cutlery. Um, Copperhead. And if you notice, uh, it has a, uh, a Knights of Columbus shield on it. Um, and I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus. This is probably one I should probably pull back out of there and hang on to it in case I need to go to a meeting and want to have a knife on me. So I'm going to take that one back out. Um, so that one is no longer in the junk box. And this is a little thing, stainless Japan. It's a little friction folder. Uh, and, I don't know, don't do anything with it. So that's why that's in the box. And uh, and then over here, Rough Rider Custom Shop. What's this? It looks like the bits and pieces to a stockman. I don't know if it's all there or not, but that's also the other thing that's in the box. But uh, that's the knives in the box of junk knives that fit in the box of junk knives. I also have other knives that would go in the box of junk knives if these knives weren't in there already. So anyway, there you go. A pretty much a tour of the box of junk knives. I missed the little yellow German rally and my Christopher Columbus 1492 to 1992 lock back. But otherwise everything was covered. Um, and as you can tell, some of them are truly junk, and some of them really aren't that bad a knife. It's just uh, I don't really have a use for it, so that's why it ends up in the box. Uh, and as I mentioned, I have other knives that could go in the box of junk knives, but until I make room, I can't put them in there. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, tell me what you think of some of these knives that were in the box of junk. And oh yeah, the uh, the Damascus fixed blade and the white tail cutlery upswept skinner, they're going back in the box, but they're not going back in their sheaths because I do not want to screw up uh, the knives just because they're in a box of junk knives. And I'm not putting these sheaths in the box either for fear that they might even screw up other knives. So the sheaths will have to be stored separately somewhere. Anyway. Back to restack, repacking the box. Talk to you again soon. And that brings us to the conclusion of another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias Almost Live. If you liked what you saw, give us that thumbs up and leave us a comment. We always like to hear from you here at Knife Chats with Tobias. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias is up and running. But thanks again, and we'll see you soon.